Hello everyone, uh, it's Ren here and I've decided to uh, record a new video to discuss today the what I consider to be the importance of logic for life. Um, this is going to be hopefully the first of a hopefully long series of videos where uh, the length does not exceed 10 minutes. I was talking to a friend of mine recently and the person was like saying, 10 minutes is the way to go. So you just maintain people's attention, don't like take too much of their time and uh, make your point. So we'll try if I'm, you know, we'll see if I'm successful. So uh, why do I think that logic is important for life? Um, you know, I think that people, when they hear the word logic, they immediately associate it with uh, mathematics and in a sense, it's true that like the most formal kind of logic could be seen as mathematics, but it's not true that you need to have a solid mathematical background or to have liked maths when you were a kid to enjoy uh, logic as a discipline. Because if you take kinds of logic that are not completely abstract, completely formal and completely symbolic, the logic that you're going to be dealing with is going to be of a verbal nature and it is fundamentally interested in studying and analyzing statements and whether statements make sense. So you take any particular sentence that you hear someone pronounce about anything. For example, the color of Coca-Cola is brown. This is a statement that could be logically analyzed. Uh, Ren is an idiot, logically analyzable, although, you know, um, there might be semantic discussions as regarding the meaning of the word idiot. Um, but you could also have logical propositions about, you know, things that are more complex relating to a political discussion, relating to an intellectual discussion or to a discussion even about your friends or just really anything whatsoever. Um, logic is interested in anything insofar as it is a statement and insofar as the statement pretends to make sense. And what is meant here by making sense is simply whether there is a consistency in the way that the words are brought together. You know, I'm intentionally using simple language to really communicate the gist of logic rather than trying to have like a very complicated discussion about technicalities. And I don't think I'd even be able to have that discussion. But anyway, so, you know, you have a certain number of words, usually involving what we call a subject. So Ren or Tom or whatever, a verb, a predicate, you know, is green, is, uh, is an uncle, uh, goes to the shop. That's what you call a predicate that comes with a subject and you can have complex structures associated with uh, those propositions. A proposition is basically a sentence when it is viewed from the point of view of logical analysis. So we're trying to say, okay, any pro particular sentence that anybody says, let's look at it as a proposition and let's see if it is logically consistent. If it is logically inconsistent, what it means is that you should not believe what the person who says has said that you know says like it's not a statement that should be taken to be true even though sometimes it looks like it's true it actually isn't true and what's important about logic is that most of the time the untruth of a logically false statement is not determined by whether, you know, by observation in the world, you look at something and you say, okay, like, it doesn't correspond to what the person said, therefore it's untrue. I mean, like, you have a, a branch of logic that is more empirical, but, uh, or at least depending on em empirical data. But in general, the really interesting aspect of logic is when it deals with internal consistency. So really, like, it's not about whether you need to check the facts. It's about the structure of the proposition itself that whether, you know, makes sense or doesn't make sense. Um, and so <clears throat> that is a very important thing to keep in mind. 
of course, if I say, for example, you know, uh, trees have blue leaves, you could say, well, this is a logically false proposition because you look around and you see that trees don't have blue leaves. But in a sense, I mean, that is very important, but that's in practice. And I'm interested in like the practice of conversations, conversation here in life, you know, showing that logic can be important to life. Um, in, in general, this is not what's interesting about uh, logic in a discussion. What is really interesting is to be able to detect what we call fallacies, so logical inconsistencies, in statements that appear to be true about the facts. So the facts will seem obvious to you, or you will not know the fact. And that will really intimidate you, and you'll assume, okay, that person must be, tr must be right. Even though, actually, maybe the person, irrespective of whether or not the fact is true, makes a statement that is fallacious, that is untrue, by virtue of how the sentence is articulated. And that is a very potent thing to have in your life when you become familiar with it. For example, I'll give you a very simple example. We'll look at a logical uh, form called the syllogism, in which you have what we call a premise, a first statement, then uh, a second statement, and uh, so that the premises are the antecedents, the consequent, and then you have the, the conclusion. And so, for example, if you say Socrates, um, Socrates is Greek, so that's the first statement. The second would be, uh, all Greeks have beards, which by the way is false, but for the interest of logical analysis, we're not interested in that for now. And the conclusion would be, therefore, Socrates has a beard, okay? So you see that here, the syllogism is correct. It's not what we call a sophism, it's a paralogism. No, it's a, it's, it's a syllogism that's genuine. And in conversation, a lot of the time when we argue, we function with these kinds of forms in discourse. So we have a lot of the time, we say, oh, but uh, whatever, like A and B and therefore C. In, it just structured like I, 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 I showed you there. The thing is that often there are errors that are committed that we barely notice. Imagine that instead of saying what I said, I said, Socrates is Greek, some beards, sorry, some Greeks have beards, you know, uh, beards having Greeks is even more unlikely. So Socrates is Greek, some Greeks have beards, therefore Socrates has a beard. Now you might say, well, it's obviously false because here, instead of all Greeks, we have some Greeks. But I can promise you, I can really promise you that when you're having a long conversation or when sometimes and even like you're uh, listening to a philosopher talk or a scientist talk, sometimes scientists make a lot of fallacies, commit fallacies, lots of different kinds of people or trying, someone trying to prove you wrong. When the argument is really complex, you're talking about the depth of psychology or family relationships or politics, like those mistakes, the sum, you will not hear it and you'll think that the conclusion is true. Well, in fact, it's false. And what the basic rudiments of logic can help you with is to be able to notice that as soon as you hear it, to be able to, even in the heat of the conversation, to be able to notice the logical fallacy and point it out. And usually when you point it out, you have disqualified the person making the statement. So there is a certain absoluteness to the objection you make. The person is not able to try to go around and be like, oh, maybe that way, and you know that not being honest with logic, if you point out the fallacy, that it's over. Like they have to go a different route. And if you have signal, sig like signal to them that you're able to see the, the fallacious reasoning, maybe they'll be more careful. Like it's possible that all, a lot of the time the fallacies we, we commit or people commit are unconscious. But if, if that means the person can become a bit more careful with like the speed at which they say things maybe everybody can benefit from it and honestly if you are to look online introduction to logic introduction to rhetoric but try to try logic a simple introduction to logic i can recommend some if you want uh one or two books and you could have the grounding uh for some a super equipment in life see you guys